Equal justice in this country is a battle between those determined to maintain the status quo and those committed to the common good. If you really are concerned, then show it. If you really want to help, you can. Ordinary citizens become extraordinary when they take a stand for justice. Few would remember this little schoolhouse or its founder had she not agreed to teach Sarah Harris, a 17-year-old black woman. When the whole town of Canterbury objected, Prudence Crandall stood firm and met her opposition head on, opening New England's first private school for black women in 1833. Ordinary became extraordinary. And how extraordinary it was 10 years later when Andrew Judson, Miss Crandall's neighbor and strongest opponent, freed the black Africans who had overthrown their kidnappers aboard the ship Amistad. Ordinary citizens rallied to the side of the Africans, raising money for their defense and eventual return to Africa, as the courts affirmed the general right to rebel against evil. If you lend a helping hand to struggling people right around you, you can make a different world. The Emancipation Proclamation legally ended slavery in this country. But for many, it widened the gap between justice in word and justice in deed. As women rights advocate Julia Smith remarked in 1875, how much better if liberty and equality indeed ruled throughout the land, as is the boast of men. The 1886 Supreme Court in Plessy v. Ferguson declared the rule of the land separate but equal, legally endorsing segregation. But Connecticut had endorsed a higher road. If you really are concerned, then speak up. You can demonstrate your point. In 1866, Connecticut was the first state to ratify the 14th Amendment, guaranteeing equal protection of the laws. Two years later, Connecticut public schools were declared open to all children, regardless of race or color. If you want to change the world. As the 20th century dawned, Connecticut law made it a crime to deny anyone equal access to service because of their race, color, or alienage. World War II brought many blacks north to work in Connecticut's defense industry. Experience after the First World War raised concern that advancement of minority workers may cease after the war when the troops returned home. With a country at war against a racist regime in Europe, public sentiment against discrimination grew in Connecticut, voiced by men of integrity. Leading the call was William Mortensen. If there is to be any meaning to the democracy, which we are defending at such a dreadful price, we must insist that its blessings be impartially extended to all our people, regardless of the creed they profess or the racial stock from which they sprang. In 1943, Governor Raymond Baldwin formed the Connecticut Interracial Commission. It was the first state-sanctioned public agency in the world created to promote racial harmony and to eliminate racial discrimination. It's easy to sit 
on the sidelines to ask what can one person do but each person has the ten volunteer commissioners and two paid staff set about to define the problems and find their solutions. No one can give it for you. The early hope was that prejudice and discrimination could be eliminated through education and informal conciliation. But the need to press for expanded legal authority became obvious. Connecticut lawmakers responded over time, expanding protections, the commission's authority to enforce them and finally providing meaningful remedies to victims of discrimination. Nationally in 1954, separate but equal was finally struck down in Brown versus Board of Education. While the Supreme Court could end segregation as a government policy, it did not have the ability to compel the country to act differently. But ordinary citizens, knowing they were right, challenged evil authority and began to win. I take it then that you are advocating Negroes in New York to stay out of these national chain stores. Oh no, that's not true. I'm advocating that American citizens interested in democracy should stay out of chain stores. Uh, ultimately, along the way of life, an individual must stand up and be counted and uh, be willing to face the consequences, whatever they are. We're willing to be beaten for democracy, and you misuse democracy in the street. By the time the rising national consciousness was expressed in the Civil Rights Act of 1964, many protections embodied there were already long-standing Connecticut law. The protest movements of the 60s led to organized activism in the 70s. The protections against discrimination were extended to include age, sex, marital status, and physical and mental disability. More individuals sought redress through the official channels provided by the commission. Much has changed over time. Many doors have been opened, but too many still remain closed. We've come a long way, but there remains an important challenge for each of us. If you really are concerned, then show me. If you really want to help, you can. But you'd better start right now by making changes while you're able, or your world will do. We must come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself, a society that can live with its conscience. And that will be a day not of the white man, not of the black man. That will be the day of man as man.